Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. You know, meditation is a characteristic of the spiritual mind. Meditation is continued thought, reflection, or contemplation. We are encouraged throughout Scripture to meditate on and to think on the things of God. The psalmist said so wisely, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Not only does the psalmist tell us to meditate, but Joshua gave the call to the children of Israel to meditate, saying, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Joshua knew how to meditate on the Word of God, and I am convinced that meditation gave Joshua the strength and the courage to go forward and fight the battle of God. Timothy also wrote that we are to be diligent in reading and devoting ourselves to the meditation of Scripture. As we consider and yield to the call of meditating on the Word of God, we will be drawn more and more to spiritual things and will give more interest to and consider God in all of our ways. What are some of the spiritual themes that we can meditate on? First, we can consider and meditate on the marvel of the divine interest that God has in men. God has you, beloved, at the center of his heart and his will. The psalmist declares, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? God is mindful of us, beloved, so much so that he paid a great price to show us his mindfulness. Another thing to meditate on and to consider are God's wonderful works. We are told in Job to stop and consider God's wonders. They are many. You know, the other morning I woke very early and I was up in time to see the wonderful sunrise. And it was beautiful. You know, sometimes it may seem that this world offers nothing but trouble and heartache. But when we take a moment to stop and meditate on all the wonders of this world, it will, in no doubt, cause us to love God more and to long for His fullness. And in considering the wonders of God and His works, we can meditate on the lessons of nature and how God uses nature to speak to our hearts and minds and to bring peace and trust. In Matthew 6:28, Jesus said, Why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. God doesn't want us to worry, beloved. He wants us to meditate and not worry about what we don't have, but on who he is and his great love and power. For just as the flower will fade and die, so shall we someday. And at the end, all we will have is our blessed Lord to guide us to our eternal home. Also in meditation, we are to consider the blessings of providence. We are instructed in 1 Samuel, Be sure to fear the Lord and serve Him faithfully with all your heart. Consider, there's that meditation again, Consider what great things He has done for you. When I am having a difficult day or moment, I try and practice praising and thanking God and meditating on how far He has brought me and what He has done for me, inside, not so much materially, but spiritually, where I know will count in the end. We are to also consider the disappointment of the worldly life. The world and its ways disappoint. And in the little book of Haggai, it says, Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. 
You drank, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Beloved, anything and everything that is not centered on God will in the end be futile. We are to also meditate on and consider the history of the past, the history of what God has done for us. We are told in Deuteronomy to remember the days of old, to consider the generations long past. It says, Ask your father and he will tell you, your elders and they will explain to you. Beloved, I pray today that you have great accolades for the Lord your God of what he has done for you. I love to take out my blessing jar and see what God has done for me, all of the prayers that he has answered for me. Our past should help us to walk, to make wise decisions and to walk wisely. And to in the present, which will affect our future, we are to walk with that wisdom. It's good to look back as long as it enables us to go forward and to trust the same God that parted the Red Sea to part all of our Red Seas. There are three other things in our meditation to consider and to think on. The purpose of discipline is meant for us to know in our heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord our God disciplines us. Also, we are to consider the end of a life. We are told to ask God to teach us to number our days, to be wise, to understand, and to discern what our end shall be. And God has given us His priceless Word so that we might consider, lastly, the matchless life of Jesus Christ. In Hebrews it says, Consider Him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that we will not grow weary and lose heart. Consider and meditate upon the matchless name of Jesus Christ and His wonders, for He cares for you today. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636.